Won't you take me to the place where you leave me? I'll follow the cry of my heart. It's the place where only you can ever bring me. Where I know I'm safe in your arms. I'm safe in me.
And God said that he's seen your heart and it's because of your heart that he is trusting you with the next level of glory in your business. From the crown of his head, God, to the sole of his feet, rushing waters. I speak fountains of riches in the waters of the Lord. this and it's on the powerpoint ready for you therefore my beloved brethren be you steadfast unmovable always abounding someone say abounding in the work of the lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the lord he's telling us that we need to be steadfast tell your neighbor it's not an option we are in a kingdom army we are not a world chameleon 
But it's the church of God that is still standing today. And I know you've heard other messages, but, but these, are, these, are, these are my words from the Lord. We see we've been through the fire and the church has been through the flood. But I got good news tonight because the real church is still standing on its feet. And it is still kneeling on its knees and going to God in prayer over this nation and what is happening in our world and in our culture. The Bible is the narrative. Someone bring me my Bible real quick. The Bible is the narrative. I want someone to shout with me right now and say there's no exchange. Come on, come on. I walk with me. I said somebody shout no exchange. This Bible right here does not need to be rewritten. It don't need to be recalibrated. This Bible still fits you and it still fits me and it will still fit my kids and it will still fit my grandkids. Come on, somebody up in here. It don't need to be rewritten and it don't need to be edited for purpose, amen, is applicable to every human being. Whether they are saved or whether they are not saved, it applies and it's important. It is the inspired word of God. Can we please not forget that it is the inspired word Word of God. The world was never meant to be the louder narrative. But there is a narrative that is going forth. And if you're not careful, the narrative, the agenda of the world system that we are facing will try to become a louder voice to make there be an exchange. Somebody say no exchange. What you listen to the longest becomes the strongest in your life. And it is said that the longer that you listen, what you keep hearing, you begin to believe. And so that's why I've learned how to turn off the news and I've learned how, 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 how to channel some things out. And, and when Facebook becomes too much, I've learned to, to shut it down for a day or two days. Come on, how many's with me? Because there's just a lot of stuff going on. But that's why the adversary is very aggressive. Because he understands that what you keep hearing is what ultimately you're going to end up believing. So the enemy never shuts up. He never gets tired. He is always strategizing how to win over a weak church. But he don't understand how to defeat the strong and the mighty church of the living God. Glory, glory, glory. Because he is not wanting there to be Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized saints of God that have learned how to step up and shut the devil up. I don't know. I feel, I feel some fear in the house. Come on here. Are you a Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized and you're not afraid when it comes time for you? Let me tell you, the time will come for you to stand up and shut the devil up and tell him you're not going to have a play yard here some of you mom and daddies you're going to have to stand up and say you're not going to have a play yard in my kids brain you are not going to teach them a different agenda you are not going to push this on my child because the word of God is enough tell your neighbor hold steady hold steady do not flinch in the day of adversity the Bible tells us when the waves of life get high, and saints, I'm not doom and gloom, but I am telling you, the waves are going to get high. Yes. We are on the old ship of Zion, and it is out in the middle of a very dark ocean right now. And the waves are surmounting, and the waves are becoming higher and higher. And you have to know how to hold steady in the midst of the storm, because your life will become buffeted. And you have to have the ability to stand firm. I love what Proverbs 24, 10 says in the New King James and the New Living Translation. It says, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. In the New Living, I like that even better. It says, if you fail under pressure, your strength is very small. Well, the test of your strength is opposition, my friend. I don't know what my strength measure is until I'm opposed. Until it hurts and when things come against me, but there's no replacement. Tell your neighbor there's no replacement for biblical standards 
and morals. Proverbs 14, 11 through 12 says the house of the wicked is going to be overthrown. Now that's good news tonight. Can we prophesy up in here this evening that the house of the wicked shall be overthrown. But the tabernacle, come on, read it with me, of the upright is going to do what? Will flourish. There is a way which seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And I like the New Living, Proverbs 21 and 2. It says, people will be right in their own eyes, but the Lord examines the heart. And how many know he has to be the measuring stick yes. for what we do in our life? There's many today with behaviors that don't line up with the glo to glorify the Lord. And it doesn't glorify his name. Amen. But they think it's okay. They think that God understands. We have families today that I hope there isn't any here. And I'm not targeting nobody. But the spirit of the Lord has said. There are people in the church houses still today. That is sleeping with someone other than their husband or their wife. And it seems to be right in their own eye. God understands. I have needs. God understands. I don't want to be lonely. But the devil is a liar. Some Someone said the devil is a liar. You know, I'm sure the thief that went and stole last night, I'm sure that his right, it seemed okay for him to, to steal. I'm sure the liar that told the lie the other day, it could have even been about you. I'm sure that it seemed it was okay to them and they had a right to do so. And it's no big deal. I'm sure someone with the drink of alcohol in their hand tonight even. If you're watching online, I'm sure you might be thinking it's just a girl's night out. But it is not okay because it's in conflict with the God that we serve and cherish and love and uphold. So let's come on into the church Now I'm talking about the world Because that picture I just painted Shouldn't look like the church But can we come on into the church right now Let me just talk about that a minute When the faithful eased into unfaithfulness And it was just a spoonful at a time Because it never happens overnight It is the slow drift The reason was right in their own mind and I want you to see this tonight. There's nothing wrong with activities and specialized events and our, you know, at Johnny's playing football and Susie has dance practice and choir and, and she has this and that and mama's got five, six things on the agenda. There's nothing wrong with activities, but it becomes wrong when, when all of a sudden now you're working on Sundays and it seems right to you to do so. man's way seems right in their own eyes. Woo. But I love Hebrews 10 and 23 and we're going to look at it because this is what I want you to understand. Anything in your life that robs you of divine presence has also robbed you of divine rewards. So when we allow the culture of the world to seep into the church, it begins to rob you of divine presence. Hebrews 10, 23 to 25, let us hold fast. Say hold fast. hold fast. The profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works. We're to provoke each other to what? To love and to what? Good works. Many are too busy working. They have no good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another so much the more as you see the day approaching. So when we replace what the world says with what the word says with a louder voice, come on somebody, an exchange has occurred. And I'm ready to preach up in here tonight. When platforms became a stage. My God. Hey, hey. When worship became performance. And when the church was just staring at a platform instead of engaging in worship. I'm glad I didn't see that up in here tonight. I'm glad I see some people that had their hands raised. And from the fruit of their own lips, we're going to go to praise up in here. That's what the real church looks like. Somebody, do you know what the real church looks like? Yes. So instead of engaging their own heart, they want to rely on the praise team to engage the heart. That means an exchange, someone say an exchange, has taken place. When numbers of people filling the seats become more important than the evidence of power in the church, an exchange has taken place. 
service. When we have time limitations that were put on services and it grieved the moving of the Holy Spirit out of our churches, an exchange took place. We were more interested in building church buildings than we are in building people. An exchange has happened. We were interested in being a social club, but we're not training an army no more. We come to sip coffee and donuts, and how can the church serve me, but we're no longer coming in. How can I serve my God, and how can I serve my church? I'm here to look for an army. So many times in the church we find we're giving out ministry title. But ain't nobody been processed for that title. An exchange has occurred. We have screen addiction. And it happens on our phones. We're looking at Facebook all the time. We're checking our email. I know I got to check up and follow up a whole lot of stuff all the time. Especially when you're a pastor of a church. And that ain't no excuse, but we do have screen addiction that has come into our culture. When the mainstream media is telling us what we should believe and what we should not believe. And we're all confused. And no one knows what in the world, who's telling the truth and who is not telling the truth. Now, if the media was full of wisdom, it would be a different story and we would all be listening. But when you're changing your mind and you're waffling like a double-minded man, unstable in all of their ways, you ain't going to get my ear. Well, because a lot of it is lies. It is fear-centered dogma with a brand new agenda. I think the real church is aware and we are discerning there is a brand new system coming into play to take away the real rights. And they're not just taking away anybody's rights. It's going to come down to your right. It's going to come down to your church. It's going to come down to what you believe. It's going to come down to what your grandchildren are going to end up believing and hearing every day of their life. Someone has got to stand because we don't want an exchange. So there's confusion. Confusion is the consequence of a rejected truth. I'm going to say that again because I need you to get this in your spirit. If you are in a state of confusion, it is the consequence of rejected truth. And that's why we have gender confusion. And who is the author of confusion? Satan is the author of confusion. So if you're wondering and you're confused tonight, sitting in this room or watching online, there are only two genders. They are male and they are female. There is not three, there is only two. Get rid of the confusion, get rid of the devil, because the devil is a liar. God made you perfect the first time he made you. He did not make a mistake. good God. Tell your neighbor he's a good God and he's not confused. So there is no need of exchange. 2 Timothy 4 and 3 for a time is coming when people no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. This is why we need to be raising up preachers in this day and hour that will not preach what you want to hear, but they will preach what you need to hear. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Well, 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. Paul, I love Apostle Paul telling Timothy, he says, Timothy, you should know this. In the last days, there will be very difficult times. People will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and they will be proud. They will scoff at God. Don't you see it? They will be disobedient to their parents. They will be ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. Do you see it? They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. Boy, did we get our fill of seeing that during the presidential race. 
all the burning and looting, no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. We see that happening more and more in this day and hour that we live in. And I don't know about you. I'm not calling for the church to get woke. I'm calling for the lions to wake out of your slumber. And lions to begin to roar against the principles of the Most High God. I ain't going to say it's going to be easy. No, I'm not saying there's not going to be a price. Because there's always a price with truth. In the history of our nation, we've never seen it ever like this before. Somebody say amen. amen. When you see politics begin champion everything that your Bible condemns, there's an exchange trying to take place. Yes. The church has a responsibility to push back yes. against yes. evil. Yes. And it goes on in verse 4 and it says they will betray their friends. They will be reckless. They will be puffed up with pride and love pleasure rather than God. And so see the church has got to get rid of this always wanting the easier road because I got news for us. The easier road has now been washed away and you're going to have to make a decision and choose you this day who you will serve. Will it be God or whether will it be the idols of this world? Choose you this day who you're going to stand for. Which my friend, if you've been blessed with Encounter His Presence broadcast, this is now your opportunity to sow into the fertile soil that will produce a harvest in your life. The anointing that you sow into is the anointing you reap from. So give today. You can give via Cash App at dollar sign Brenda McClintock, dollar sign Brenda McClintock, or simply go online to Brenda McClintock, M I N dot com. That's Brenda McClintock, M I N dot com, and click the donate button, and I would love to connect with you. You will also find booking and contact information there. Until next time, may you be increased with more than enough of His presence, power, and glory.